instead of the current treatment, which is metronidazole. So why we that's why we, we use omics, omics analogies. One to find the biohacker. Second one is using genomics. I I think uh Thank you.
Remember that in the first video that actually when the antibiotic enter, there is a part that push it out from the cell. And another one, they have to like modify the protein target. So this is how works, uh, beta lactam works. The first one, uh, as a hydrolysis enzyme, they hydrolyze the antibiotics. When they hydrolyze the antibiotic, the antibiotic cannot be function no. And the second one, they pump up the antibiotic from the cell. And finally, they alter the protein target so that the drug cannot bind into the protein target. Okay. So, uh, theory it all. Yeah, study by theory it all shows that proteomic study on inner membrane fraction of carbapenem resistant uh, asinobacter baumene have been a relationship between beta tamis and C and beta 51 protein along with the metabolic enzyme and application factor 2 and a rhizosome of protein. Furthermore, in ampicillin pseudomonas aluminosa, uh, protein study, noble porins are involved in the resistance. So, if you are strongly stuck, what in your mind now? You can target what? You can study what? You know, to, to, from this analysis, what are uh, Influx, okay, of potassium ions of the bacteria cell and corn cell then, okay. Comparative protein profile of a susceptible leptomycin susceptible staphylococcus aureus compared to resistant strain seven to one, they showed that there was a differential abundance of protein in different functional categories like soils several associate targets and biofilm formation proteins. Okay, you see when you do organic, you can take a lot of information there. So from that, you know this protein which you have to analyze further what is the importance of this protein before you start you want to use this as the target for maybe you want to make a new net diagnostic tool, you want to make new vaccine or you want me to find another uh, drug. So, from this, yeah, starting from this. Okay. Okay, now, now you look at the policy, uh, the other okay? Uh, uh, have lately brought a great deal of attention as a result of the incident of infection caused by multi register gram negative bacteria okay this one we
Very uh, common see here, they, they study on the endrococcus. They found that uh, increased and uh, decreased abundance uh, of uh, resistance strain, uh, mainly on the uh, metabolism uh, related. Uh, very common see resistance protein increased, metabolism related protein decreased. Okay, and we look at also at. Uh, a single vector about the night. So, beta lactamase energy and protein production enzyme are upregulated. So, another protein which is on W and surface antigen down regulated. Can we look at here? You know, when the antibiotic uh, uh, will work on the cell membrane, such as the lactomycin on a static focus. So, they, they, they found that differences in the abundance in the biopillar formation uh, and cell wall associated targets. Okay. And then anamycin on tissue reactive life. Okay, they alter auto membrane protein and membrane meat A. Okay. And like lenzoid. Uh, they alter metabolism and transport of carbohydrate in, involved in resistance to lime zone. Okay. We have also protein synthesis, uh, antibiotic that works on protein synthesis. So they, they can see that over expression of e flux system associated with the resistance in the cloud area. So this one we know that when e flux e flux system meaning that this antibiotic will be part out from the cell. Okay. So the other one is DNA synthesis like nitronidazole. Actually, nitronidazole is a repurposed drug that used to treat jariasis and biases. Okay. They are also used to treat uh, some kind of a bacterial infection in human as well. So nitronidazole uh, Actually, work on the Rat A, uh, ferric uptake regulator, the infantroductase, and also alter expression of stress related protein. Uh, right, farm pissing, alter several metabolic process and uh, excretion mechanism. So, this table actually show how powerful protein technology to understand the molecular level at the protein, protein level that. Uh, Actually, uh, how the proteins, the regulation of proteins here, you can see all the express and under express are regulated and down regulated. Or you can also find the unique protein that are uh, expressed in the uh, resistance so that they can understand what, why, what are happening now in the resistant microbes, okay? the antibacterial resistant microbes. Okay, so before we go to genomic, I want you to understand uh, because in this video, they will touch on the alteration or mutation in the gene and then gene transfer and then uh, gene transfer cross species so you can listen to this word and after that, we will go to the case by case, okay? Welcome to the Antimicrobial Resistance Awareness Video Series. This is a series of six videos that aims to educate the general public, especially the youth, on antimicrobial resistance. We have simplified the information so that it is understandable to anyone. 
He just needs to know a little English and a little science. Welcome on board. Explaining the mechanisms of resistance. As we start off this video, we would like to offer a big pointer. It is good to note that antimicrobial resistance, abbreviated as AMR, is a natural phenomenon that occurs due to genetic changes in the microbes. Remember the theory on evolution and natural selection? Yeah, that's it. Survival for the fittest. Bacteria, just like other organisms, constantly undergo genetic mutations to ensure survival of a species. Their predators in this case are the antibiotics. However, the increased resistance has been precipitated by our rational use of antibacterials. This has provided the bacteria with insights, enabling them to develop resistance at a very high rate. How does this resistance actually occur? How do these bacteria actually counter the effects of antibiotics? To understand this, it will be good if we start off by first understanding the basic structure of bacteria. So, here is our bacteria. We have a long tail called the flagellum. We have a few penetrations called the pili. The outermost layer is called the capsule. Beneath it, we have a cell wall. Under the cell wall, we have a plasma membrane and some constituents enclosed within the membrane, such as the ribosomes, chromosomes, plasma DNA, and cytoplasm. The first mechanism of resistance is reduced uptake of the drug. In this phenomenon, the bacteria changes its structure such that the drug is not able to penetrate its cell wall. This implies that the drug will not act on the intended site, hence the bacteria will survive. The second mechanism involves modification of the drug target site. Let's say that drug A was supposed to bind to a certain component of the chromosome. To do this, the drug has to identify this component. However, if this component structure is changed, it means that the drug will not bind and will not act. Just like that, the bacteria will live to see another day. The third mechanism that some bacteria have developed is that they actually attack the drug themselves. In attacking, we mean that the bacteria changes the structure of the drug. When the structure is changed, the drug can no longer work. The last mechanism we shall talk about is active efflux of the drug. Efflux means removing. Bacteria have become so clever of late. When the drug has just penetrated its cell wall, it is clicked out very fast. This prevents it from destroying the bacteria. As we finish off on the mechanisms, it is important that we understand that some bacteria may use two or more mechanisms to protect themselves from the effects of antibiotics. Actually, the mechanisms we have talked about for bacteria are the same ones used by other microbes and their respective antimicrobials. Hmm, it seems that these bacteria are very smart. Next, let's see how these bacteria are able to transmit this resistance to others. This is what makes the resistance phenomenon a deadly challenge. Resistance is caused by a mutation of genes. This gene can be transmitted to other bacteria via two methods, vertical gene transfer and horizontal gene transfer. In vertical gene transfer, the bacteria transmits this gene to its offspring. Bacteria multiply by dividing. This division happens very fast in some of them. If the parent bacteria has the resistant gene, it can give rise to so many bacteria with the resistant genes. In horizontal gene transfer, the bacteria with the resistant gene transfers this gene to its neighbors. Remember the plasmid DNA we saw in the previous diagram? Well, these plasmid DNAs can be transmitted from one bacteria to another, thus spreading the resistance genes. What makes this phenomenon dangerous is a concept for positive selection. After taking antibiotics, the antibiotics destroy the bacteria that do not harbor the resistance mechanisms. These bacteria are regarded as sensitive. This may deal with the only resistant bacteria that may be only a few at the moment. However, if left alone with less competition in their growth mediators, such as nutrition, these bacteria multiply rapidly. At the end of it all, so many resistant bacteria are present. This concept applies to other microbes too. It is our hope that you understand the basic mechanisms on how resistance occurs. You see, it's not as hard as it seems. We only need to know some science basics. 
In the next video, we will look at how the factors or drivers have resulted in a rise in antimicrobial resistance. In the meantime, we have one request. Please help us in sharing this video with your friends. Join us in passing this information across so that we can outsmart this clever bacteria. Pseudomonia. The input in the WHS data in terms of coverage of antibiotic resistant genes by shotgun specific. So, what is study is the antibiotic resistant gene. So, this is well studied. Okay, in each, because uh, we, can, we can see that the genes get involved in antibiotic resistance, but same across the microbe. So, we especially in bacteria. So we can you know, see what's happening in the genes. Of course, there is a mutation like that, that occurred in synonymous or not synonymous. I think, have you heard about the synonymous mutation and synonymous mutation? I guess so, when you talk about microbiology, right? Okay.
patient or the special characteristics in this. So what are the treatments that are good for the patient that are they, they will give the same antibiotic anymore, but they will get another one. Okay. Okay, SNP, yeah. study of a single nucleotide polymorphism. Did you know how we get a single nucleotide polymorphism? I hope you all remember that from the very class, right? I think she, he talked about this SNP, yeah. single nucleotide polymorphism. So, uh, it's just like, I just I use like an example in highway, in highway, okay, in highway we have like one sweat is 10 kilometer. We have that, what, the 10 kilometer. And then we go here is 20 kilometer. So there's that 20 kilometer in each, uh, I mean, throughout the highway. So for SMP, this is a tag use to be differentiate among the species, especially in a current, the higher model. So that we you know that and see sometimes I mean early you know we they are different. Maybe uh, for the the one see but the 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 homeostasis of different one should be uh, a okay something like that. Okay. So uh, in this study, SNP in 10 multiple antibiotic resistant pseudomonas, clinical isolate, product, all the drug given were submitted to rapid annotations using subsystem technology and the preferred body sequence we use for comparison. So, non synonymous single nucleotide polymorphism found in the clinical isolates compared to the reference genome. And the comparison of this and SNP between antibiotic resistant and susceptible to nuclear isolate revealed inside the genome, genome variation. This and SNP identified in the multiple resistant clinical isolate were found to be altering a single amino acid in several antibiotic resistant genes. Okay, the mutation found in genes including EFLAC pumps system, cell wall, the identification, and T, involving the repair mechanism. Okay, in addition, nucleotide emission in the genome and mutation leading to generation of stock odons were also observed in the antibiotic resistant clinical isolates. So this is how they study the mutation. In this case, it has non-synonymous as an Okay. Although it's all the single amino acid, it will affect other uh, resistant mechanism. Okay, so I think I end my lecture for today. So now I would like to uh, make our discussion. Uh, okay, I will actually just be a moderator or facilitator for your video, but to you know to make the discussion uh, fruitful and everyone participate in the discussion. So, let's say Najat uh, uh, Songti, Songti videos. But I would like to have your friend like Tapa and Sana to, uh, to, you know, to not like ask, uh, asking the question among, among all of you. And, uh, so and he will be the uh, will answer. Okay. So I will you know add on. I just uh, add on some info from uh, that I will uh, that that will be okay.
Okay, now right. Hello, brother. My name is Sal. Nice to meet you. Uh, your assignment. My assignment today for genome sequencing plasmidium from Sydney from the drive and sport. Micro machine. Then application of the genome technique to help a special for malaria parasite the plasmidium fatsidium. Is often needed by difficult obtaining high quality clinical sample for the field. This is the evaluate the use of a selected poultry application to sequence the fossilian genomes for the survival spot. Can vary it with a period use of local liquid genomes and blood sample. The general comics using the analysis that the genome of genome data uses the diagnosis uh, disease. Objective of the study. This study has uh, three objectives. One objective, develop reliable method. The objective is a development of life method of the sequence of plasmodium plasmodium genomes for the dry blast sample. The neighboring and biological study and the life scans in endemic regions provide insight into drug resistance and supporting malaria control effects. Two objectives, enabling and biological studies. The objective is to develop a scalable sequence method for blast medium Pensilidium from a dry blood sample using S GI. Enabled timber hunting in the direction study and real time malaria. Surveillance to provide insight into drug testers and support malaria control effects in endemic field. The three objectives overcome. Logistical challenges. The FWGA input high quality genome sequence of being the civilian from DBS sample. Effective overcoming logistic challenges associated with the higher sample collection. Methodology of the study. One study. Sample collection, two state DNA abstraction, three state selective for gene amplification, four state library preparation, five state sequence and data analysis. This for method, this methodology for study. This analysis selection. Uh, about or the next of genomes, the human or genomes parasite analysis. The result of discussion, amplification, ER. This WGA achieved over 18 fold enrichment of B as a human DNA upon PBS extracts. Coverage and profile. As WGA provide coverage for more than 85% of the four genome. This result for the summary. SMB concordance. High concordance 99.9% between SMB code from DBS and DB sample was absent. Genome sequence of the plus medium falsibilium from DPS sample overturning logistic challenges and for sample collection doing 
new epidemiological study. This surveillance enabled large scale epidemiological study on real time of malaria of Rwanda. It helped inside improve drug resistance and aging public health treatments and malaria control. Reliable and scalable. The SWGA network is a reliable and scalable advantage of the sequence B perseverium genomes called B for BBS large scale genomic study in the Ladia Endemic region with limited resources. Before used for diagnosis, the malaria is very, very important. We can use it to the malaria infection from the, from the limited, limited resources uh, for diagnosis infection. This reference for my presentation, uh, the huge data, the early presentation for this data. Thank you everyone and thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any question for a presentation? I'm ready for any question. Because the main reason for doing that presentation was about which technology that they have used and why they use it. The uh, use of genomic technology is very important because we did the diagnosis and achieve the. What do you use it? Which like to? The instrument, the technology that you yeah. use it inside your presentation, the paper that you should take. Uh, I'm just diagnosis. But we have like uh, uh, for genomic, we have different technology, technology that the device that have been used. Yeah. So which device they have been using? Yeah. For analyzing the data. Yeah. Okay, before we go on, yeah. Yeah. Because they have to yeah. the sequencing. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so this is your the technology that they have used for producing the only data yeah. your sample. No, it's the English like the It's an initial set. The second one is uh you say that you are doing that uh W W something that it's a box. No, yes, and then you can see. And then what happens to that? I don't know if you know the technology that you are in the music in the cross They are shut, shut. We can't make I have learned about short things, something and long things, something. And why also is modern? So I do not wish you to get any. But along that, it's short. Along that, it's just a question to answer. I think you should take note about that. Because yeah. you want to present, you need to know the technology, the instrument, and then what data that we will check out of the instrument. Okay, that's all. Then we put the second video.
Okay, so it's one measure. Actually, the sequencing that the blood sample is not here. This is the RNA sequencing. This is not the the first one is the That's why you can do the demonstration. So initially, it's there and then it runs available for this stage in China. Initially. Is there any treatment, antibiotic available for this patient? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the same one mentioned of hidden antibiotic resistance that we were mentioning. 
uh, nanopore genome sequencing, we're also able to find out the JPC2 gene in copper resistant to nanoparticles and JPC40 genes, uh, which is one of the few KPC subtypes covering resistance to Zeta leading agonectomy and susceptible to paranormal, which is a nanoparticle that can be used in the clinical settings. So these findings of the two genes confirm that the conventional method testing was correct at the time point. So what actually caused the change of this resistance subtype in the course of infection? So these scientists actually found out that it is actually a complex infection of two Flexella pneumonia carrying KPC2 genes and KPC40 genes that were abundant between this cell and the animal state. So upon the initial treatment with the catalytic and metal in day four, this causes a selective advantage and uh, causes a uh, resistance change uh, in the new day time under exposure to set for the day and metal for three years. So in comparison to the conventional techniques uh, used, uh, the genomic sequencing workflow uh, can be here and we can also see that currently clinical and established workflow can take up to 52 hours after starting to study from here in the 52 hours, while genomic workflow only takes a few hours to deliver their first data and to provide a fast and accurate result. Showing this genomic um, sequence we have a superior capability in that the detection time from comparing to conventional methods. And perhaps if you try sequencing method of employed during the first day of admission for this patient, the patient might not uh, pass away due to this infection. So as a conclusion, a real-time genomic sequencing has a great potential for the real identification on the real resistance for value. And then we are seeing that we might be able to incorporate this real-time genomic sequencing in the near future, especially in low and middle income countries like Africa and Germany. So Thank 
So now we go to the next uh, video. Yeah, uh, one of the last thing. Uh, this is my presentation and the uh, paper that we just said it's about the only technology that they can use it, uh, to produce uh, the only data of transcriptomy and metabolic uh, to study the mechanism of resistance, uh, drug resistance, but the drug resistance in capsule and pneumonia, and uh, specifically suggesting a reduction. Introduction about this study. This study has been done on the Tripsilani 1 gram, gram negative pathogen responsible for viral mesothelioma infection. And the Tripsilani that we have used in this study it was inspected from UTI patients and with the pan drug, uh, drug resistance one or PPS, uh, they put Tripsilani 1 gram, pathogenous positive one that have been uh, resistant to all the available uh, studies. So the antibiotic that I've been using in the study and uh, to find out about the resistance mechanism of this, uh, the third level of uh, antibiotics, such as in uh, uh, some, the one that is uh, uh, in inhibiting cells in the site with the help of the antibiotic that plays a crucial role in preserving cell in its uh, activity. Transcriptomic approaches provide a systemic level overview of drug interaction and expect on bacterial, bacterial resistance. I will put the mechanisms of action beyond the inhibition of cell wall synthesis. The study design is a uh, consist of the using ceftazidine abibraxone on clipsin and pneumonia or plant drug clipsin and pneumonia infection that are deleted from the UTI patients. And the sample then treated and prepared for metabolic analysis and transcriptomic analysis. Metabolic analysis then undergo both an undergo to the bioinformatic uh, analysis to uh, interpret the result of these two, but uh, omit theta. Uh, the methodology of the study first, uh, based on the methodology, they prepare the samples. And uh, the samples are growing the material to the exponential phase in the growth cultures, and we found out about minimum inhibition concentration to study the met metabolic and transcriptomic in that uh, concentration in different timing after one hour treatment, three hour treatment, and six hour treatment. Uh, 
first part of the methodology, they get the metabolic mechanisms for the help with the liquid chromatography mass spectrometry and devices uh, by the uh, using the three of the legs, the uh, analysis, and by the help of the external parameter and water that's used as the extraction solvent to align the liquid peptides and sample being analyzed in a single batch to avoid any variation and control also metabolite identified based on exact mass mass and retention timing. For transcriptomic analysis, uh, they did the RNA extraction and RNA sequencing. Uh, the RNA extraction, uh, they did for the three tiny samples and by the RNA's mini kit protocol fluid, and then they prepared the libraries with an extract kit that sequence into primaries in alumina high sequence 1500 and data processed with the appropriate features talents and potential to the expression identified using BOM and the Lima uh, technology bioinformatics bio one. They use gene expression at the potential gene expression and guidance for significance between the timing and they use it treated and untreated. And pathway and basis performance using KEGG. KEGG and Biocide database. The results and discussion of this uh, omega analysis, firstly, metabolic uh, uh, results uh, showed like 500, uh, most of the results and show the significant results at six hours after six hour treatment. 500, 533, uniquely after metabolism of lipid, peptide, amino acid uh, synthesis, and the first significant change in the metabolic profiles between treated and untreated groups. The key, key affected pathways include central carbon metabolism, amino acid synthesis, and also nicotine metabolism. So the application of stress response methods indicating the enhanced material stress and the treatment. And the transcriptomic results show the significant difference, uh, differential expression of gene related to cell wall synthesis, the clock pumps, and stress responses. And the down regulation of genes involved in peptide glycan biosynthesis as to the cell wall targeting mechanism, and also a regulating of the stress responses and clock pain pump genes suggested that the bacteria have the ability to adapt, uh, adapt, uh, activate adaptive mechanisms. The discussion about the planning of this study, uh, first the mechanism is that that symptoms in Avibactam struggle multiple bacterial pathway, not just cell wall synthesis. Uh, this is one of the significant uh, benefit about this treatment and that responses bacterial exhibit metabolic and genetic adjustment to contract it. The drug effect highlighting the complexity of resistance mechanism. This is showing why it's became resistant. Therapeutic application, the sign of this uh, broader mechanism can guide the development of more effective combinations for a piece and help with overcoming uh, the resistance. Shown in this slide is the parental volume transcriptional analysis of perturbation, alteration in the metabolism uh, that significantly consistent together after six uh, uh, hours of treatment. In this result, also metabolism and transcription, which is itself involved by the genesis of the organic of the peptide glycan from the metabolic change and a reduction of the production of the precursors and also the alteration of the gene expression related to the peptide glycan biosynthesis. But it's a mechanism inside and therapeutic implication. about uh, the last option for them you mentioned that I think that they combined the beta-lastomous inhibitors with the the same the you know the 
basic antibiotic that they come on. So then what they found in the third generation, third line of bioantibiotic, antibiotic, they found that this one also like it's getting resistance to some of the patients. So what's behind that thing? Because they solved the problem of the resistance with the cytosine with inhibitors. But why it's not working? So what's the problem with that thing? Because they found out with the metabolic so the antimacetomy. With the help of this only data, they found like this antibiotic, it's not only like working on the cellular synthesis, so it's working on many like metabolic alteration. They found it with treating like this capsule uh, pneumonia hypotenuous positive one. They found like 533 from metabolic pathway, like being after changed with this antibiotic, and also like how they. Make it like sure this metabolic a uh, metabolic uh, alteration or changeable came from the antibiotic. They didn't with Today, we will introduce the whole genome sequencing to detect antibiotic resistance genes in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, an opportunistic pathogen, has emerged as a major public health concern due to its remarkable ability to resist multiple antibiotics. Understanding the genetic determinants underlying this resistance is crucial for developing effective treatment strategies.
The main objective of this study was to identify and characterize antibiotic resistance genes in P. originosa using whole genome sequencing technology. With a particular focus on P. originosa strains isolated in clinical settings. By elucidating the genetic determinants of resistance genes, this study aims to improve our understanding of how these pathogens evade antibiotic treatment strategies. Methodology Bacterial sample selection Three strains were selected from 108 previously published Pseudomonas strains. Table 1 antimicrobial susceptibility patterns of the three selected P. originosa strains. DNA extraction, polymerase chain reaction. 1. Use specific primers to perform PCR to confirm that the sample is Pseudomonas originosa. 2. Analyze the PCR product by agarose gel electrophoresis to confirm the amplification of the target gene. Figure 1 PCR results showing the P. the originosa Oprah L gene, M, marker, line 1 and 3, positive control, lines 2, negative control, lines 4, 5, 6, strains of P. originosa. Whole Genome DNA Sequencing Whole Genome DNA Sequencing Libraries were prepared using the Illumina Nextra XT Library Preparation Kit. 1. Samples were barcoded using the Nextra XT Indexing Kit. 2. DNA sequencing libraries were confirmed and quantified using an Agilent Bioanalyzer 2100-1000 DNA chip. 3. Genome sequencing of P. originosa was performed in an Illumina MISEC using a paired in 2500 cycle nano kit. 4. The quality of sequence reads was checked using FASTQC. 5. The genome was assembled de novo using the SPADES genome assembler. 6. Species were confirmed using a 16S RNA-based species identification tool. 7. Antibiotic resistance mechanisms of were predicted using the Comprehensive Antibiotic Resistance Database Mapping Sequence Data with a minimum match percentage of 99% and a minimum. Template coverage of 90%. 8. Antibiotic resistance genes were predicted using NASTA Segman Engine and SRSRT2. Table 2 ARG database of the PE5 strain after whole genome sequencing. Table 3 ARG database of the P7 strain after whole genome sequencing. Table for ARG database of the P73 strain after whole genome sequencing. Experiment results. The results showed that diverse antibiotic resistance genes were present in the genomes of P. originosa isolate. Resistance genes to lactams, aminoglycosides, fluoroquinolones, and other antibiotic classes were identified. Notably, Several isolates display unique genotypes that contribute to multidrug resistance, including efflux pumps and modifying enzymes. 
This study highlights the genetic plasticity of P. originosa in acquiring and disseminating antibiotic resistance genes. Conclusion In conclusion, whole genome sequencing proved to be a powerful tool for analyzing antibiotic resistance in P. originosa. The findings highlight the importance of continued surveillance and molecular characterization of resistance mechanisms in guiding effective treatment strategies. Future research should focus on understanding the dynamics of resistance gene transmission and developing targeted treatment options to effectively combat multidrug resistant pathogens. Thank you. Yeah, it's PCR. PCR. Uh, okay, then that's... Okay, so use it okay, and the second step? Ah, oh, yeah, whole genome sequencing, this one, whole genome sequencing. So they use it uh, by analyzer, aligned by analyzers, this one. Okay, no, then it's go, okay, confirm it, and then the luminous sequencing. It's the same. Susceptibility patterns of the three cell. Oh, this one. So at last they realized that they 
this one. It is consistently followed by character. Essentially, this. So, what is this cycle from? Where, where does this cycle come from? Where, where does the sample come from? Clinical setting. Is a patient or what? Uh, One patient. From a paper uh, the, the last time. <laughs> no, no, sometimes. Clinical is uh, sometimes. Uh, clinical actually is isolated from patients. Is it? Is it from patients? Uh, yeah. Yeah. From patient. From one patient. Uh, I, I don't know. Just be quite few things. Just they didn't have any research. His 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 book was not written. Uh, he he he. I can look. A free spray. Yeah, a free spray. No, no, free spray. Free spray. Hundred. It will be published before the next week. I don't know. So, I think. But, yes. I, yeah. That's what I thought. So, what is this thing? So, uh, that, that's all part. That's all part. I know why they choose this thing. Because one is all sensitive, the one is like intermediate, and the other one is like all distant. So, that's why they, they choose this three for the detection. So
知道。这有点大呀、啊，这个。我这样，这样比个剑，每个每个组塞一个人。哎，先加进去再说。